Hi, everyone. I'm glad you're here. Uh, I'm Deb Graper. I am a teaching pastor and also a youth pastor here at Acts. I'm glad to be able to teach this new series that we have called um, My God. Uh, there's a saying in Maine in response to people asking for directions when they've been lost, and it's the fact that you can't get the from here. And I know in Illinois you might have heard it different. It might have been spoken to you as you can't get there from here. And apparently in Maine, the reason why it started and originated there was because there's so many roads and so many lakes that actually crisscross the area that when you get someplace sometimes to go back to where you want to go, it's very, very difficult. So in Illinois, we've said that before to people before. When they've been lost, we've said you can't get there from here because it's too difficult to try to go to where you are now to get to where you need to be. So I'm sure that you've been heard that before if you've been lost. And um, when you are lost, it's very deflating and very hopeless, and it feels very fatalistic if someone tells you something like that, that you are so lost that you don't know how to get back to where you need to be. You know, I remember those days when me and John and our kids would go on vacation, and we'd head up to Wisconsin in our motorhome, and I remember us being on some roads. We were trying to look to get to a campground so late at night, a state park, and we would be traveling, and it would be dark, and John would say to pull out the map. You know, it was the days before we had MapQuest, and we had um, Garmin, and we didn't have uh, Google Maps, but I remember him telling me to pull out the map, and this paper map that you would have to unfold and unfold and look for all the little lines and a dimly lit light while the kids were sleeping. And I would say to John after we hit a detour, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't think we can get there from here. I don't think we can make it. So it was very, very devastating those times. And usually John was pretty frustrated with me and would pull over and have to look at the map himself to try to find his way back and make it to where we needed to be. Well, when Cameron and I actually talked about our teaching schedule this year, the one thing I really wanted to teach, it was this, this song that we sing, Waymaker. I really thought it had such great points in it when we sing it. It's the idea that God is our way maker, that he is our miracle worker, that he's our promise keeper, and that he is our light in the darkness. You know, when we talked about that um, song, I said it just really encompasses so much of how I feel about God, and I'm sure everyone else feels about God that has a relationship with him when we sing it. Well, this worship song, it was actually written by Osanachi Joseph, better known as Sanash. And she's the senior worship leader in um, Christ Embassy Church in Lagos, Nigeria. And the song has actually been covered by numerous, numerous worship leaders over the, throughout the world. And it's touched so many hearts. And it describes, like I said, this idea that there's this personal relationship we have with Jesus. And when I heard this song for the very first time, when we played it at Acts and we worshiped to it at Acts, I kind of felt like, yes, yes. This is a song that really, truly echoes my feelings, my emotions about God. You know, God has been there for me in so many ways. And when I sang this song, I was like, yes, that's exactly it. I, I worship you, God, because you are those things to me. So for all of us that love him, we sing this song so passionately, I think, because of who this God is. This God that saved us and this God that helps us through these dark times, you know, the struggles that we have. You know, he's definitely shown us the way. He's shown us the way, how to make it to him. He's definitely shown us that we can get there from here. And he has performed miracles in our lives. And I've seen him perform miracles in mine and so many other people's lives throughout my walk with him. He's made us promises, and he's kept them over and over and over again. He continues to keep them, and his promises are still there for us for the future. And he has definitely been a light that guides us. In this dark, turbulent world that we live in today, it is just so hard to um, find your way. But God keeps shining that light for us. So this is a God that we serve. He is faithful. He is trustworthy. He is constant. So during this time of uncertainty, our God is the only certain thing right now that we really feel like we have. You know, right now we're not having church in the normal way. Maybe you're not seeing your family. You're not seeing your friends. You're not seeing those people that are part of your lives. And it's so difficult because you have, like, no normalcy. And I think this is a time where we really have to, like, lean into our faith. We have to lean on God because he is there and he is our constant. And he'll be there for us. And he's going to show us a way, a way that we can make it. So today, I really wanted to talk to you about this first aspect of the song, the idea that he is our way maker. 
You know, this is a God who never, never tells us that we can't get there from here. This is a God that says that you can always come to me. It doesn't matter who you were in the past, who you are today. He loves us and he desires for us to come close to him. So today, wherever you find yourself, um, no matter how dark it looks right now to you, nor how hopeless you might feel right now, you can always find your way to God, our Father, through Jesus, who is our waymaker. So the definition of waymaker in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary is one that makes a road. And that's exactly what Jesus has done. He made a road for us that we can travel, that we can follow, and that we can get to God, our Father. So it's just amazing the idea that he built a road for us to the promised land. John 14, 6, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Now, I know that sounds very divisive. In today's world where everything sounds like, you know, any way you take it, any way you can get there, you know, it doesn't matter. But Jesus actually tells us that he is the only road. He is the only path to get us to God the Father. So when he says he's our way maker, he is the only one that can take us from lost to found. Only one that can take us from here to there. And he explains, explains that to us, to all of us who are sinners and all of us who've fallen short of the glory of God. You know, we've, we've met you before so many times, the idea that there's none of us that walk this earth that are perfect. No one except for Jesus walked this earth that was perfect. All of us fall short of what God would want from us. So and for us to actually have a relationship with Jesus Christ, what we need to do is we need to actually ask him to cover us, to cover our sins, to actually come to him and we ask for forgiveness. And when we ask for forgiveness, he says that he's going to take all of our sins, the sins that we've we've really um, you know, done ourselves at the very beginning to the very end of our lives, that he's going to put them on himself and he's actually going to take them to the cross and he's going to die for us. One of the things I've mentioned so many times as I've spoken over the years is the idea that I think what happens a lot of times in our faith is we can actually have this idea that when we say that we can accept Jesus as our Savior, we say it for like all of mankind. But I think it's so important because Jesus actually expects us to have this personal relationship with him this idea that we personally can think about mine, I know the sins I have. I know the sins and the things that I've done, the things I've said, the things I've reacted to, my sins, that he actually took them to the cross for me. And it's a very personal thing. And I think that's what people are missing so many times in their relationship is they really don't understand. They follow religion, but they don't really make it a personal thing, which is a real relationship with Christ. So our Father in heaven can only be reached when we're perfected. By believing that Jesus is the Son of God and that we accept him as our Savior. And I think that's what's so crazy is to think that, you know, him taking all the sins, our sins, and he takes them to the cross and then we can be forgiven and that we can be perfected and that we can actually follow Jesus in the way he set up. So Jesus was really amazing, the idea that what he did, being that he is part of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, he actually came to the earth not to just tell us how to do it, but he actually comes to show us and give us a visual of how it's actually going to happen. He's going to show us the way. And I think if you you see when Jesus, before he leaves this world, before he goes off to go to his Father in heaven, he meets up with Thomas, who's later labeled the the doubter, It has to see Jesus' hands and his feet to see if he's got the holes. And what he says is he tells him, he says, I'm going to go and I'm going to be with my father. And he says, I'm going to go the way that I need to go. And Thomas actually says, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way you're going? We don't know. And I think that that moment, it has to been so devastating and so difficult to thought that your savior is going to leave this world. And it is going to be hard. It was going to be hard for them. They knew that they were going to go through some tough times. But Jesus actually set a way for us. You know, I think that exactly is what happens to us, too. You know, the idea that we have this faith that we walk through on a daily basis. We get up, we try to follow Jesus. It's not easy. But we keep on holding on to him. If we keep him in our sight, he helps us through so many battles but also the fact that he also sets this way for us for the future, for when we do finally breathe our last, that we actually have a way that we can trust, that we can count on, that we can get to the Father. 
You know, I think it's so great that actually God sent a son, his only son, to come and show us in such a personal way how we, too, can actually reach him. You know, he gives us directions. He tells us, this is how you do it, man. This is how you're going to follow after me. You know, I, I was thinking about the fact of, you know, have you ever been lost and someone says, they start telling you the directions and you're actually like trying to keep up because they're going too fast? You know, you're saying, I want to go here. And they say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You take three roads, you know, down and turn left. And then, you know, one road, you're going to go another two blocks and then you're going to turn right. And then you're going to turn left again. And you're like trying to keep up. And it's so difficult. And you don't know if you can actually make it there, even though they're giving you the directions. I think what's really interesting is that we would all love it at that moment if somebody could just say, can you jump in my car? Can you drive me there? It would be so much easier if you could take me there and help me along. It would be such a comfort. And I think that's exactly what God did when he sent his son. He sent a way for us to actually have so much more comfort. The idea that someone went first. Someone went first and we can trust that way and not just have to like wonder how it's going to be. You know, I was thinking about this the situation that John and I had years ago when our kids were really small again, we went on this canoe trip to the Fox River. I remember we were just having a great time with all of our friends. We were just hanging out in the canoe, and it was great. And then we came to this one part of the river where people were jumping off a 30-foot cliff. And I was thinking about the idea of, like, you know, all these people are jumping, like, oh, my gosh, I don't know if I could ever do that. Well, everyone decided they were going to try it. So I thought... I could do this too. I could maybe jump off there. So we actually all finally climbed up and went the 30-foot cliff, and no one wanted to go first. Everyone was like, no, you go first. No, you go first. You go. Because for some reason, we watched everybody else do it. But when you got up high and you were from that vantage point, it was a lot more scary at that moment. Well, finally, someone went first. It wasn't me. And when I started watching them, I started to watch how far they jumped out. I started to watch how they took a running start. I tried to watch where they were landing so that when I saw that they jumped up, they weren't hitting a rock. And all those different things that they did finally made me feel more comfortable where I thought, I can do this. I can jump off this. And I did. I ran, made my jump, landed in the water. Couldn't wait till I reached that, that water line and come up and breathe that air. But, you know, I never felt more comfortable until I saw somebody else do it first. And I think that's what's so great about God, our Father, is that he did that for us. He did that for us so we can have comfort, that we can feel good about the path that we're on. That's the same way that Jesus is, man. He came and he went first. He is God, but he's also our brother and sister in Christ, and he actually shows us the way. He tells us how to do it. This perfect, perfect man who died this human death But because he was God and full of this resurrection power, he goes to the cross with our sins, and he dies. But because he has so much power of life inside of him, he can only die for three days. It's just amazing to me. And then he tells us and he shows us that this is exactly how it's going to be for us. That's how it's going to be for us that have accepted him as king and our deliverer is that we actually are going to just have a small, we're going to go from death to life everlasting. You know, I heard someone just recently, it was just last week, I heard someone say that Jesus was the only one that beat death. And I thought, no, 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 that's not true. Because Jesus just showed us that he was first to beat death. Now it's each of us that get to beat death. We actually beat death. We will not have a death everlasting. We might breathe our last breath, but we're going to come out on the other side and be full of life again, just like him. We're going to escape death too. Jesus just tells us that His way is not the end, it's actually a beginning. When we get up to heaven, we get to be with God the Father. It's our new beginning, it's our new life. You know, I think we can become so lost in this world, so lost. You know, we make mistakes and we follow up our lives, we do things that we shouldn't have done, that we even know we shouldn't have done. But God is so good that he says that if you accept him as your savior and you walk as he walked, just like he did when he was here, that we too can live a better way. You know, a way, that statement, a way, actually indicates progression. The idea that you progress, you show progress. And when we follow him, that is where he is now. He's progressed. He's with our Father 
in heaven. The one thing, though, I'd like to say is it all sounds good, but is it easy? No, it's not easy. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy at all. In fact, he tells us it's going to be very difficult. And then he says something that's really actually really devastating and very sad when you read it, especially if you're a follower of Christ because you read it and you think, really? He says, very few will find it. You know, when I read that for the first time, it was just heartbreaking, heartbreaking, because there's so many people you love and you want them to make it. But he calls it the narrow way, the narrow way. And I think it's for us to remember that, yes, we can all start to follow, but we have to keep going. We have to, you know, continually keep striving to make it. Matthew 7, 13 and 14 says, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for the many who chose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few ever find it. Like I said, that was devastating to me when I first read it. And it's something that actually I prayed for for years, that I think, you know, we would sing a song, I'm like, God, help me to never fall away from you. I never want to walk and turn away from you, ever. So, you know, when you hear that, it's difficult. You think, why is it so difficult? Why could it be so hard to follow God? All you have to do is just say you accept him, right? No, there's much more to it than that. What it means is that we have to leave behind some of the things that God points out to us that are going to hinder us from walking along his way. And I think that's where people get tripped up. That's where people get stalled out and they don't make it. I think at that We could start to follow after God, but, you know, sometimes we have our past. We have all the things that we've gone through. Maybe you were raised in a family in a certain way that they thought, or maybe you've even gone through the school system that taught you something, or if you listen to people tell you something, they had their own ideas. And what happened over time is you have these preconceived ideas. You have your own reasonings. You have your own ideas on how life is. And see, a lot of times we have to actually put those aside when we follow after God. There's also people that actually start to believe in their own abilities, the idea that they can be good enough, that you can be good enough to reach God just by being who you are. If you do good things and not bad things, if you, you, you even them out, you know, somehow you do more of the one than the other that you can make it to God. Also, there's relationships. Our relationships that we have with people, sometimes that we know aren't good, those people we know are actually kind of cause us to stumble in our faith. Those ones that maybe it's not even big things. Maybe it's nothing like, you know, alcohol or drugs, or maybe that is it. But there's sometimes I think that we don't even take into consideration the idea that some of the people around really cause us just to be more negative. People that aren't trusting. People that maybe are so... Um, angry and obstinate and all those different things you know sometimes we are around those people and we can pick up that same idea that same mannerisms those same thoughts those relationships that are actually more um, detrimental in our faith than they are beneficial we also have to give up our own status the idea that we could become something because God actually says that he wants us to become less he doesn't want us to look like we're always trying to get the you know the the glory and to be like, you know, worshipped ourselves on earth, that we're actually supposed to make ourselves less. I mean, Jesus came and he washed the feet of the disciples, the people around him. This is what we're supposed to do. And a lot of times our human nature is that, no, we don't want to act that way. We want to actually be glorified here on earth. Also, we want to be honored, and we also have pride. So many of us sometimes just don't want to be told what to do. You know, we'd rather just find our own ways. Like, don't tell me. I know what I'm doing is good enough. And it's not. So is it going to be easy to follow after Jesus? Absolutely not. It's going to be very, very difficult. It's going to be a very narrow road that you're going to walk. And you ever been on a very narrow path? There isn't a lot of people that can walk in a very narrow path together. It really is just one person walking. But this is, again, what I'm saying with the personal relationship. You are going to have to walk this walk yourself. You know, you can't have your buddy there or even your spouse there walking alongside you, holding on to you, lifting you up, trying to keep you on the road. It really takes some personal responsibility. You're going to have to walk yourself. You're going to have to find your own stride. You're going to have to walk through those tough times and those battles yourself. It's nice to have a support system, but you really have to do this on your own. 
Nobody can take you there but you. We're going to have to leave some things behind to follow after Jesus. You know, I, I kind of was thinking of like who in the Bible has really changed. And I, the one person I've always loved to talk about is Paul. Um, Paul was a great disciple of, of Jesus. And, you know, it was an interesting thing with Paul because Paul obviously at the very beginning was not a follower of Jesus at all. As a matter of fact, he hated people who were following Jesus and he hated the way that people were following so one day he's on the road to Damascus and he actually is on that road and then God takes him a different road, a different way. And in Philippians 3, 7 through 11, it says, Paul says, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite knowledge of, or infinite value of knowing Christ as my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counted it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him sharing in his death so that one way or another I will experience the resurrection from the dead. This is Paul. Paul who actually goes on to write so much of the Bible and really showed people so many people the way to Christ actually hated him at the very beginning. It was just amazing when you think about that, that Paul was actually there at the, the stoning of Stephen. When those people were there stoning Stephen to death, he was there holding the coats. Yeah, it's just amazing now that he actually says, I count all of what I was running for and running after worthless now. You know, I think it's really interesting because most people in those days and still today, if we would have met Paul, we would have said, no, no, you can't get there from here. You can't make it. You can't possibly change. You couldn't possibly come to Christ being who you were. But yet Paul, who's on the road to Damascus, he was following that way. Instead, he follows the way of Christ, and he follows the way maker. I don't know today where you find yourself. I don't know if you feel as if you've been on the wrong road way too long, and you've traveled way too far, and you've made way too many mistakes, and there's no possible way that you could ever reach God yourself. But I want you to know that until you breathe your very last breath, it is never too late to follow the Waymaker. Never. God is so good that he gives us so many opportunities to come to him, to follow him, and to love him in the way that he desires. Like I said, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. This way is not for the faint-hearted. That's what I've always said. It's not for the faint of heart. This is a tough walk. It's a tough road to, to follow. It's not going to be easy. There's going to be struggles. There's going to be suffering. There are going to be things that you're going to go through that you never possibly thought you would experience following after God. From time to time, you're going to question whether or not this was all worth it. I have myself. There's been times where I thought, is it worth it? Is it worth it to go through pain? Is it worth it to go through this much work, this much struggles, this many trials? Because it seems like sometimes you get out of one and there's another. But it is worth it. You're going to see some family. You're going to see some friends who are going to walk away from you once you start to follow God. It's just something that happens. Because you realize that you're on different roads. Your road's going this way and their road's going that way. And until somehow we can find a way to meet, you're going to keep going the different directions. I think you're going to find that things that you used to chase after Things that you used to catch and that you enjoyed and that you loved and you thought you would never give up, you're going to find after following Christ that you just don't find as much joy in it as you used to. Maybe some things that you used to do that were more sinful and that was your experience with your friends or, or your family. Things you used to say, things you used to do, and all of a sudden you realize that you feel this conviction or this challenge inside of you or you just don't feel the joy like you used to have when you spent time with them because you realize that you are now different. That happened to me. It wasn't easy because you actually walk away from those experiences and you think, it's not that I ever think I'm better. I'm not. I'm no better than anyone. 
but it's just that I don't want to act or say or do those things anymore because when I do, I feel like I'm farther away from my God than closer. These are the things that you're going to go through. You're going to lose those things. These things are going to be left behind. But much better to leave those things behind than you be left behind because God is our way maker. He just wants you to follow him, to walk his way, to reach him for the promised land. You're going to gain so much more in the end if you continue to follow after God. You know, this way that we follow has so much joy in it if we let it be joyful. I think with me, there is a lightness and there's this freedom and this peace that I have from following Christ. You know, when I think of peace, peace is just something so, so important in life. I think that so many people walk around not knowing what to expect and, and being fearful of what's to come. And this peace that you can have, especially during this tough time right now, there's such a comfort to know that I have Christ and Christ won't let me go, that he's there for me and that no matter what takes place in this world, I'm going to be with him. That's so important. You know, I, I think that we have to remember those lyrics of that song when he talks about being our way maker. You know, there's parts of the song where it says, um, he is here, he's moving in our midst, he's working in this place, he's healing every heart. You know, those, those ideas that he's here for us if you desire to have him in your life, that he's here. And just like the song says, sometimes, you know what, you're going to think that you don't see it, that you don't feel it. But the thing is, God never does stop. He never stops working. He's always doing things. It's like a tapestry all the time where you think sometimes you're not seeing something take place, but believe me, there's something going on all the time for God to try to reach us for his kingdom. He doesn't desire any one of us to be lost. He wants us all to come close. Unfortunately, it's us that puts our hands out and says, no more, don't come close. I don't want to follow your way instead. But God never stops working. It's important for you to understand today that he loves you. He loves you so much. When I came to Christ, it was the first time I ever felt like this is it. This is the road. This is the path that I need to be on. This is 100% what God always wanted for me. He is my way maker. And I love him so much. And I will never stop worshiping. I pray to God I never stop worshiping him for what he's done in my life and my family's life and for all the people that he's reached. It's just amazing. But I want you to know today that he is your way maker. He's not just your neighbor's way maker. He's not just your family person's member's way maker. He is your personal way maker. He wants to make your path straight. He wants to help you reach God the Father. And like I said, just like Paul, you're never too far. You've never traveled too far and done too much to ever reach out to Christ, like I said, until you breathe your very last breath. Let me pray for you. Well, Lord, today I just pray for those um, that are watching, Lord. I just pray that if they just happen upon this video, I just pray that, Father, you would really speak to their hearts. I pray that their hard hearts would be softened. I pray that they would recognize how good of a God, how kind you are, and how much you want them to be on that narrow path. I pray for those who are struggling, that have accepted you as their Savior, but they're struggling to leave those things behind. I pray that you would just give them just a boost of confidence, a boost of faith to get through this. Lord, I just pray that peace would just pervade their spirit, Lord, that they would feel you like never before. I also pray for those who've never accepted you as their Savior. I pray that you, Lord, would help them, Lord God, just to reach for you, to admit that they're a sinner, to believe that you are the Son of God, to confess their sins because we all have them and just ask for forgiveness and begin to make you king of their life. Lord, we're thankful that you are so good that you went first, that you showed us the way, that we don't have to be fearful, that we can trust in you and that you're going to give us the future, Lord God, that lives with you and God the Father. We thank you for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've done that today, if you accepted Jesus as your Savior, 
just ask that you would maybe just throw a seven in our comment section. We are just so happy that you decided to join us today. We really want to help you. If you made that choice, just reach out, tell one of us. We're always here for you. If you need prayer or if you need anything, just to, to contact us, tell us something. We're here for you, even during this tough time where it seems like we're so far apart. We want you to know that we're still real close and that we love you and we care for you. Thank you so much.